knockouts once again are at the center of what's going on here in Impact Wrestling. Welcome to ringside. I'm Tom Hannafin alongside the drama king, Matthew Raywalt, once again in Chicago. Trinity, Perrazzo, and Grace once again at the center of what unfolded in our main event. The Knockouts World Tag Team titles were on the line. Ultimately, the Coven retained against under siege opponents, Grace and Perrazzo. We're going to dive into this more in just a little bit. Trinity getting involved. That was interesting. Uh, speaking of interesting, let's talk about what went down with the Impact World Champion this evening. We talked about it last week on this show, is that Steve Macklin has tried to put all these obstacles in between, in between him himself and PCO, their Impact World title match at Under Siege. And it seems he's just made more enemies. He's made more problems for himself. He had to defend the Impact World Championship for the first time tonight, earlier on against Rhino. The behavior of Steve Macklin was ruthless. It was insidious. The way that he retained the championship was one thing. But what he did to Rhino was completely uncalled for. And the match is over. This is an all-out assault by Macklin. Look at the place on Rhino's knee there. Oh, it's the oh. chair to the knee of Rhino. You son of a bitch. Macklin seeing red. Oh, oh God. God. You son of a bitch. No. Stop this. Macklin, stop this. No. Macklin is on another level. This know who he is tangling with. Security down here at ringside, but the damage has been done. Macklin massacres Rhino. Ruthless, insidious, short, effective. Time and time again, it's effective. And there's going to be a lot of you. Rhino's going to the hospital. I, I know, I know. And I, I want nothing bad to happen to Rhino. I have all the respect in the world, but we're talking about Macklin and his tactics and what works and what doesn't, and damn it, this worked. And I know there's going to be a lot of people out there, maybe you included, who are like, now Steve Macklin finds himself in a no disqualification scenario with PCO come under siege, and oh my god, that's got to favor PCO, right? I disagree. We've seen what Macklin can do, even in scenarios like this. Need I bring back up Barb Wire Massacre? from last fall, Fair. Steve Macklin thrived in an environment like that. So PCO, the French Canadian Frankenstein, can throw every single thing he has at him. I think Macklin has what it takes to prevail. Macklin is capable in an extreme hardcore environment, but PCO, it's not a tagline is not human. If you're going to keep PCO down in a no disqualifications match, especially for the Impact World Championship, you damn near have to kill him. And Eddie Edwards and company tried, tried to, tried to do that times. twice in the desert with a freaking car and a shovel at one point. I mean, Macklin is going to have his work cut out for him Friday, May 26th, live on Impact Plus, Fight TV, and YouTube for Ultimate Insiders in London, Ontario, Canada at Under Siege. Macklin versus PCO, no disqualifications for the Impact World Championship. Championship. Speaking of the Impact World Championship, tonight we saw the return for the first time ever in action on Impact Wrestling Television and in six years, the former Impact World Champion, Nick Aldis. He got the win against Sheldon Jean. We were joined on commentary by Kenny King. Kenny King, much like some have claimed Steve Macklin is ducking Nick Aldis, Kenny King seemed to also be ducking Nick Aldis. You see, you always use these words like, oh, pe people are claiming, the, the people are saying, people, people. No, it's you. I think it's you saying all this stuff. You're the one saying he's ducking. Am him. I wrong? Yes. For the eight millionth time, yes, you are wrong. And of course, you were continuing to needle our guest, Kenny King, while he was out here. No, King is just, he's somebody who's been here. He's been in the trenches. And I can't i can't take anything away from the resume that Nick Aldis brings to Impact Wrestling. The history, the championship reigns, everything he has. But, yeah, it sticks in the craw. I know as a performer, when somebody else kind of walks in the door, pomp and circumstance aside, history and resume aside, your, your only thought is, man, I've been here. This has been my turf, and you're just going to come here and walk, jump to the front of the line? No way. I understand Kenny King's motivation, but Nick Aldis has said none of those things about jumping to the front of the line. He's here to contend for the Impact World Championship, but he's made it very clear he's happy to earn it. He's earned and won three world titles in his career. So I expect Aldis to earn things and do things the right way. Then I want to turn my attention to something that didn't feel quite 
right. The Good Hands got a victory against Decay in tag team action because of the involvement of Brian Myers. I don't want to speculate too much, but what the hell's going on? I, I don't know. We had just recently seen Myers and Moose teaming, and we thought maybe yes. they would be a big threat in the tag Moose team Moose was division. confused earlier tonight. Yeah, and, but apparently Brian Myers, again, I, I don't want to speak for him, the, the, the rebirth of the sapling learning tree coming to fruition once again, maybe. I don't know, but I'm here for the good hands getting ahead. Those kids... Yeah, potential. Yeah, I like they it. have a lot of potential with Myers. Yeah, don't say learning tree, I swear. When we come back, we're going to dive into the situation, especially regarding the director of authority, Santino Morella, the continued attacks, how Dirty Dango and Joe Hendry, the digital media champion, have been on the case. And also, we'll dive into our main event, the Knockouts World Tag Team titles on the line and Trinity's involvement. Fight back, then attack. Never let your guard down. May 26th on Fight, the assault continues mercilessly and with extreme malice. This world is not for the weak. This world is meant for those who were born to conquer. Impact Wrestling presents Under Siege, live May 26th on Impact Plus and Fight. Our coverage continues here in Chicago. We are going to talk about the Knockouts World Tag Team title match and the way Trinity injected herself into that situation in just a moment. But we do want to address what's gone down lately with our Director of Authority, Santino Morella, taken out again just a few weeks ago in the midst of a matchup between the ABC, the Impact World Tag Team Champions, and the design. There's been speculation that maybe it was Callahan who attacked him the second time. And there was speculation that it was Callahan who attacked him the first time out. You can rule out the design because they were in a match at the exactly. time. So it, it's left a lot of questions. And Dirty Dango has a clump of hair, and he's the dictator of investigation. Assistant to the dictator of investigation. Right. So, uh, like, or what do whatever. you think's going on? I mean, I don't know. And meanwhile, he's got Hendry, his supposed best friend, helping him out, kind of leading him on this wild goose chase, so to speak. You know, at first he thought maybe it was Trey Miguel because Trey Miguel and Santino Morella had a rebellion were having some run-in. True. And Trey was very upset with him. Then, maybe they thought it was Zicky Dice, who, who tried to pull the um, the coup of the century on us when he posed as El Denerico, giving Bane Johnny Swinger, man, oh, that, that was the moment for me. It was it. It was it. The one in the, on the road to 50. But either way, they had a, a bone to pick with Santino Morella. Maybe it was them, but answers are still yet to be found definitively. Yeah, uh, I hope we get to the bottom of it. Dirty Dango I, I, is in That'll be fun to watch regardless. His investigative skills are questionable, <laughs> but, you know, hopefully his heart's in the right place. Uh, right now, we want to turn our attention to what went down in our main event. The Knockouts World Tag Team titles were at stake. The Coven defending against under siege opponents, Jordan Grace and the Knockouts World Champion, Deanna Perrazzo. Remember, come under siege Friday, May 26th, live on Impact Plus, Fight TV, and YouTube for our Ultimate Insiders in London, Ontario, Canada. Perrazzo defends her championship against Jordan Grace. If Grace loses, she cannot challenge for the title so long as Perrazzo is champion. So naturally, these, th these two went into an unsteady alliance going into this matchup. The Coven pulled out everything in the book to go behind the referee's back. I would call it cheating, underhanded tactics, all the above. And ultimately, the Coven retained the titles because of some incidental contact that happened down the stretch. Jordan Grace accidentally bumping into Deanna Peraza. Accidentally. Oh, stop it. No, 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 I get it. You're going to do whatever you can to hold on to that tag team gold. But I also do think they had a little bit of the better chemistry. Again, I said it till the cows come home. Perrazzo and Grace individually are so impeccably good. But knowing that they had that championship matchup hanging over their heads, I think there was a little bit of tension that maybe even they didn't recognize. And then coming down that home stretch, Jordan Grace colliding with Deanna Perrazzo. Yes, and all, again, in all likelihood, an accident on the surface but I think there's something underneath the surface, bubbling, maybe it was subconscious from Grace that, you know, there was Deanna Peraza there. She could have stopped herself, but I, I I'm not going to because I want to do X, Y, or Z. But either way, it's not, it's going to lead to some higher 
much higher tensions, which were already high ahead of that match. I, I don't believe Grace meant anything maliciously by it. But you don't you, believe we, anything, anybody has uh, any maliciousness unless I like them. Because you're the worst. But you also know Deanna Perrazzo very well. Mm -hmm. I think she did take exception to Trinity arriving here last week and took a couple shots at her. We saw that play out on Access TV. And then earlier on tonight, after the fact, the Coven taking liberties with Jordan Grace after the fact, here comes Trinity because she's expressed respect for Deanna Perrazzo and Jordan Grace and backed up Jordan Grace and cleared the ring of the coven. So it, it's got to leave uh, this bad taste in the mouth of Deanna Perrazzo saying, oh, you're just trying to get closer and closer and closer to my hey, knockouts see, world title, now Trinity. now you're coming around. Now you get it. Yes, exactly, exactly. And especially to end that whole entire smorgasbord of action out there. Yeah, and we're left alone in the ring with Grace and Trinity. Again, so happy to see Trinity here turn the knockouts division on its head. But how dare you leave Deanna Perrazzo on the floor, unattended? This is the pinnacle of you our division. You should have done something. I was doing something. We didn't see it. You guys didn't see it on camera. You didn't see it on camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe what happened between Grace and Perrazzo was unintentional. Trinity coming out there to do what she could to protect Jordan Grace from the coven. We do know, obviously, the Knockouts World title match at Under Siege. Perrazzo defending against Grace and Trinity will be at Under Siege Friday, May 26th in London, Ontario, Canada. But for us here this evening in Chicago, we are signing off. Thank you so much for joining us.